Welcome back to another Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time with Path. And what can you do with those Path? Well, exactly what you are seeing on the screen. First of all, this guy is just going from two points up and down. That's just a path where it's just reversing. And this one is going in a circular path. And they, these are like nice applications for your game. So if you want to go and quickly set up an enemy which doesn't have to have like lots of AI and, and things. He just needs to go on one thing and well, annoy the player. That is basically it, what you can do with the path. Of course, you can do some other like guarding path. You can make it more complicated, let's say in top down games. But for here, well, this is good enough. So if you want to know how to do that, stay tuned. This is one up indie. I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and a programmer slash pixel artist. So if you're new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every day a new video. So let's get right into the good stuff. So how can we actually set that stuff up? So if we go in our room to the left side in our room editor, there are paths. So for example, if you click on this one, you can create a new path if you like. But that layer, well, it, you need to have it to put your path in there, but you can call it in uh, whatever you like and then well, you can completely forget it. Why is that so? Because well, the path layer is not too completely relevant for you. For that are the paths. And you have like a few paths and you can just have already a few in here. But if you want to create a new one, you just press on create new and then you will have new path. And for example, if you want to show one, that is one thing which I am not the biggest fan because you can only show one path per layer. For example, if I press on path zero, then it will show me this little path here, which is this guy getting locked to. So, well, it just shows one. And what can you do here? Well, basically, you can just change the color if you like. I don't know. Let's say we go for some reddish color, and then all the path will have the same color on that well layer. And what you can you do? Well, basically, you can have those things, and you just press somewhere on the screen with the left mouse button. Bam! It will just create another node, and then it will well be a pass from the start point to the end point. And then, of course, you can smoothen that thing out, or just make it like snappy point things. And well, depending how smooth you want to have it, you can have it between a maximum value of 20 or one. And if you pr just press one. Well, it won't be too smooth. And if you go up to maximum, well, the curve is a maximum now. And for example, if you just want to have a closed system, you just play, uh, press on close, then bam, it will be an infinity movement from start to the end for this thing which is locked into it. And for example, here you have on the, well, let's go away with this stuff. Uh, path and when once you create one it will be just here. Oh, you, for example, you create a path here and Here actually you can rename it whatever you like, but I'm not gonna do that here. Yeah, you can just select them So these two things are kind of well connected and you can double press on that and then you get like the stuff I did on the room editor well, I don't know I wouldn't use it because you need to have like a really, really good imagination to actually use it here. So I'm not sure what you're always thinking when they um, implemented it as a secondary, well, assigning thing. So let's get right into the good stuff because I have my little path guy A, B, C, D, and they are sitting here. And they are assigned to the path one, zero, two, three, and I just wanted to show you well how that actually works because you need to assign a path and you need to assign it that it needs to start because if you don't assign it and it don't say what well, start the path on well that instant it won't be doing anything and it won't be doing any movements because well it uh, needs a starting point so for example you can just go and put it into your create event and the path start once we click on that needs a few variables so first of all you need the path which you need to assign that's the thing here so you can just copy it out then you need the speed 
this is just the speed it goes along the path. Then we need an end action, which is the more important one. And here you have four. Well, they're kind of self-explanatory. We'll just go over them briefly. So one, the first one, the stop, you just go. And then once you hit the end point, well, you stop, that's it. You're at the end of your path. Nothing will happen from that point on. The action restart is actually one where you go to the end point and then bam, you get teleported to the start point. Then you start your journey again and bam, teleport back. So that is one thing. Then we have path action reversed. So this one goes to the end point and then it goes in the reverse direction and then reverse and then it will stay well into infinity even though it's maybe well not a round thing. So it's just the path like that. So for example if you want to do let's say uh, a bat which is just going like let's say those um, sinus uh, shaped waves like something like this from the left to the right side well this is how you can set it up and the last one with the pass continue and that was it's the most curious one because once you ha are having your endpoint reached it will do the same motion again from this point and then it will do like this and then like this so basically it will just copy the whole path um, I don't know as kind of a template but it will continue doing that to the right side or wherever it should be going so just keep that in mind. So these are the four uh, well, functions and once for example I start the game, well, you will see that they, uh, those four guys do that and I just well, draw on them well, what kind of path action they are having. And the last thing is the absolute value because you need to assign a thing. For example this guy you see he will continue. And he will just break out of well, the path. I guess he already did, but he's always doing the same stuff. So, for example, this one just stopped. Yep, this one restarts, so he goes to this point and pop, teleports. And this one just going to the reverse, and then he's going to well, the, this point. But just keep that in mind the flipping of the image index is not a normal thing. I had to code it in there. And well, this guy is just getting stuck here. And why is he getting stuck here? Well, because I did one thing just to show you. For example, if you do the path start in your step event, he will start the path. And then he will start the path. And then, yeah, you guessed it, he will start the path. And then he gets stuck on one point, on the very zero point when he, where he's starting. So you shouldn't be doing that. Just kick that out here and put him in here and then he will do his thing so another thing maybe you want to well change for example this is the path where it's going reversed and here i do a little trick to flip its image so basically um you have like your image direction and depending where this well object is going it will have a different direction assigned and this is for example well let's say between 90 and 270 on the left side so basically this is the left side and that's why we flip it and everything else well you do an image x scale of one and then this is how we cheaply well make it flip its image depending where it's going to the left or to the right and the last thing which I didn't tell you is the absolute value. Why? What is that? So basically once we are having, let's go to another path, let's say one, let's say two. So for example, the, this is the, the guy which is gonna get snapped to this um, path. But you can see he's actually quite far away from the first one because the absolute value means that his X and Y position are completely snapped absolutely to the past. If not, you can do a relative value and for example what you can do, all those four are being well, snapped to this little path and if it's everything is relative, they would be flying relatively uh, this kind of uh, well, way here but with their respective distances and so you can, I don't know, simulate a swarm going down. So this is actually kind of a neat function, that's why or you instantly get snapped then you go for one as an absolute value, if not, you go relative. 
so just keep that in mind and then of course you can change a few things but I just give you the more most important ones for example there's the image speed so this is the speed if you want to change it um, in your uh, during runtime you can do that for example if you want to do a smooth movement let's say for um, this guy which is going round and or up and down and you want to put in an ease function well then you change the path bit and lock it to your ease function another thing is the path position well this one is between zero and one and what does it actually mean zero is the absolute start position and one or oh, you could just say 100 percent this is the end position so for example if i go let's say at path position and i put in 0 0.5 then it would end somewhere like this so this is the halfway and that would be like three quarters away in or one quarter in and so you can change the path position if you like then you can change the path scaling because i don't know why not you can just completely make the path bigger because this is one to one so you could do that or you could change its orientation then you would just let it rotate that thing but yeah in my opinion i don't know you can do that if you like but i don't find really good um, application for that so that was basically it hopefully that was of interest to you and you understand now how you can utilize path in game maker studio that was it have a good one one up in